Hi, friends. Welcome to um, Scioto Valley Presbytery Opening Doors to Discipleship Tutor kind of oversight and um, some summer planning. We're glad that you're here with us tonight. So my name is Jenny Whitford, and we have um, a couple co-hosts with us tonight. Um, Kathy Bubb is also an educator in our presbytery, and our friend Jesse Keener is coming to us from Houston, Texas. So with that being said, we're glad you're here. Let's start with a word of prayer. Loving and holy God, thank you for the opportunity to be together, both near and far from across the United States, to gather together to learn ways to serve you and to bring our families and children and um, our grown-ups closer to you. Bless our time together. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, what I'm going to suggest that you do, where I'm going I'm to share the screen and show you some things, but also um, feel free to um, to close this, not close the Zoom, but minimize the Zoom and, and click and open opening doors for discipleship on your um, computer, if you're on your computer, that, that is. It might be more helpful if you can click on things and follow along and we'll help you do that. And Jesse, just put it in the chat if you want to click on it straight from the chat. You can do that. So let me do I always love it when um, people are sharing the screen and they look so funny, like, <laughs> like we've never done this before. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, da -da -da, here we go. Okay, so this lovely um, slideshow was put together by um, Jesse and maybe her partner Rebecca helped put it together also um, for the APSI workshop. So as you get into the website, you will see this is what um, your page will look like at the top and or on your screen. And you can see at the top there are um, lots of things that you can click on and that you can look at. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to, I am going to go to the next screen and I'm going to show you a video, an overview video of the website. Hopefully I clicked hearing. I think I did. Let's see if it works. For 50 years, APSI has supported. Can you guys hear that? No. Okay. Let me. When you share screen, you need to enable sharing your video yep. and sound with your video. It's a little bo a button you push at the bottom. Yep. Sorry, I thought I did that. Here we go. Try it again. Good Christian education and faith formation ministry. For 50 years, APSI has supported Christian education and faith formation ministries. And we are excited to take this next step in engaging and equipping Christian educators. I cannot wait until the next educator approaches me to say, how am I possibly going to do teacher training? And we have resources for you to use to do just that. When you go to the Opening Doors to Discipleship website, you'll find more than just information. You'll find a community because you'll get to see videos and you'll get to read the words that others have written. You get to hear about other people's experiences as educators and faith formation leaders. And you'll realize that you're not alone in this journey, that there's a community that surrounds you. That's why I think you should go and check out Opening Doors to Discipleship. And I love that it's a very approachable website that you don't have to start at one module and work your way through every single piece in order to benefit, that you can kind of pick and choose, that it is in language that is easy to understand. Even though it's a lot of theology, it's theology in everyday language that people can benefit from. 
This is just the beginning for opening doors to discipleship. In these days of contextual ministry that changes all the time, we know that we'll be adding new content. We want to hear from you about what you need to know to engage in your ministries. The questions that Christian educators are asking, the answers can be found here on the Opening Doors to Discipleship website. So that's the opening of, um, of the overview of what to expect. So what I'm going to do is a um, couple things I wanted to announce um, that when you use Opening Doors for Discipleship, it's not friendly for your mobile device. And part of the reason why they did that is because they want you the people I think, believe who put it together want you to get in there and open things up and engage in, in things because, well, that's how we learn how to do stuff is by playing around and working with things. So um, anything else to add to that, Jesse? Did I cover that? Yeah, it wasn't just meant as a show quick, here's a resource or anything else. It's like you sit down, you really think about it and learn from it. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, if you're able to um, open the um, Opening Doors to Discipleship uh, website, I'm gonna get there myself and share that with you so I can click on things and open them up so you can see them. Um, so if you're not super um, savvy with the, computer going back and forth between screens, that's okay. You can stay here and watch mine, but I do encourage you to um, get around and um, click around in things because that's, it's gonna just gonna help in so many ways for you to find stuff. So uh, this is what the website looks like. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit here. You can see there are these four doors that you can click and you can look at and um, before I click any of those, I want to scroll down a little bit more on the site. Um, there are these keys you can see at the bottom and the keys, obviously you can click on each of those things to see what you're, maybe some different things that we're, you're looking for. So I think I, I'm gonna click, let's see, I'll go back to the top. And so if you have this open on your own site, let's let's open the door uh, educational practices. So we're gonna open that door and get in there. And when you get in and look, you can see there's a, um, obviously there's some bullet points that you can look in, but what you're really gonna be interested in is at the bottom of this is looking at all, each of these things along the bottom, when I toggle over them, you'll see they light up a little bit. Each of these areas have things that you may want to explore and look at some more. So um, I'm gonna click on evaluate, evaluating curriculum because we were talking about this before you guys, um, came in and I'm gonna stop that for just a second to make sure everything's catching up still. Here we go, okay. So in the evaluating curriculum module, you can look in and it click around and it will help you look at different kinds of curricula. So uh, narrowing your options, there's tools um, that you can do. There are videos. Um, led by different educators. Um, Tori Smith is leading this one. We watched a video from Tori, uh, I think a couple times ago when she talked about coming back after the pandemic and some things and some research that we've learned. So when you're looking at what curriculum do we wanna teach this fall? What vacation Bible school do we wanna teach this fall? Here's a place that you can have some real tools that you can look at. Because as you all know, um, 
every curriculum, I could tell you what works at my setting, it may not translate and work in your own setting. Everybody has, to, every, each church has to look at the curriculum and um, decipher for themselves and discern for themselves what is going to work for their setting. So here is a tool to help you do that, your Christian Ed Committee, your task force, your staff people, whoever it is at your setting can, can utilize this resource to help you look at the criteria and what fits and what doesn't fit and um, what some curriculum houses write from a different theological background. So those types of things are important to, to look at when you're looking at curriculum. Okay, so let me get back in. So um, let's see here, let me share this again. So I'm going to go back up out of this um, door, so to speak. I'm going to go, I'm going to click up at the top and it's going to get me back to the home page. So back to the home page. Anytime you forget where you're at or where you're going, that's always a good thing to do. Um, if you want to, if you, um, surprise, I took a new role um, this fall and I had to teach um, member officer training. And I hadn't taught officer training in a really long time because I've been doing children's ministry for the last seven years. So in here, I think under leadership is, um, is equipping others. And in here, there are some ways that you can um, do some training, teacher leader training. And all of these, as you can see with the little YouTube thing, they all have videos that can help you, um, that you can watch some different things. Behavior, well, this isn't officer training. It could be behavior management strategies. <laughs> uh -huh. um, probably more for your younger kids. Um, but uh, I recognize the three names right there in the middle. I think Jenna, Jenna won a, an award this year at APSI and Amy has been an award winner before. And I did some work with Jimmy Steele and Presbyterian Youth Workers. So there's three people that I would trust and would love to work with. So what they're gonna have to say is probably gonna be spot on. Um, so that's also one of the things that I love about this resource. And let me get out of here for just a minute and look at you guys. What I really like about this resource too is it's all the things that you can click around and you can learn from are put on by people like you and I. That um, some people um, uh, are wonderful teachers and um, can share their skills. And so they're doing that, which is great about being a connectional church that I love that we can um, share. I have not come across an educator yet that has not been willing to share resources or help out or make connections for you. And so that's something very special that you have right at your fingertips. Um, not only here in Ohio with our pre with um, our presbytery, but as you can tell, just from the folks that have come on the call too, um, that, that that's something that we do together and we help and share with each other. I'm looking at my other computer so I can stay on track. Okay, um, let me get back to, I want to take you guys, I want to um, walk you through something in the um, notes that um, Jesse and Rebecca put together, and that is taking you through this, a, a module called the Holy Spirit. So you can either follow along with me um, in, uh, I'm going to show a slide, it's part of the slideshow presentation, or you can just minimize me and get on the Opening Doors to Discipleship website if you would like to do it that way. Let me scan this. Oh. Sorry, guys. I, I, I don't know why I get nervous when I, get, when I get in front of all you guys, but I get a little bit nervous. Okay. We're pretty intimidating people. I know. I, I can it's understand so silly. that. Yeah. I know. It's very silly. I know you guys all got my back, but you know how it goes. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Here we go. This is not what I want to share, but get me here. Okay, so back to our 
slideshow, I think. Eesh. Um, where am I? Where am I, Jenny? Sorry, guys. Here we go. Okay. Um, so I want to get to the different modules. Okay, this module is found in um, this is uh, sorry, Jess, you want to help me out here real quick. I got a little bit turned around here. You're in your your own personal word document. We're not seeing. Oh, we're not seeing your stuff at gotcha. all. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. I say, if Jesse could help you with that, that would be awesome. Because I'm going to hire yeah. her to sort through my files. Uh, <laughs> I know. Well, can I'm annually organized. You might not want me to, especially with my label maker. All right. The Holy Spirit is in the Reformed Theology door. Thank you. Okay. And it is basically, we get, okay, in Texas, we call them Reformed Baptists that don't know Reformed Theology. So this is your Sunday school teacher who has no clue or the person you grab to teach confirmation and Holy Spirit is hard to get to a level of understanding and teaching correctly. So there's little things that we do in the reformed theology, even just what is reformed theology. So that helps them understand so that they can teach and she, now she's there, she, she can help you go through it all. I got there. I got there now. Okay. So if you're on your own website, it's in the Reformed Theology door. If you're just following me, um, this is where I got to this um, Engaging the Holy Spirit site. So let me get to, if I switch, did, it, did my screen switch to you guys? Yes. 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 Okay. So we want to get to the reform theology door, which you can get to the top mm -hmm. or actually use the door. And then Holy Spirit's at the bottom. Yes. Clicking on the Holy Spirit. Here we go. All right. Now you've got this little introduction video, um, two minutes and 47 seconds. And we'll watch, we'll just show you what that is, just so you have an idea of what you're looking at. Spirit is mysterious. The third person of the Trinity is described as breath, as wind, as fire, and as a descending dove. Greetings. Uh, John Calvin, father of Reformed theology here. Even I know words cannot do justice to the Holy Spirit, but the work of the Holy Spirit is essential to our lives as Christians and to the Church of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the living God, the promised advocate or companion who comes when Jesus leaves this world. The Holy Spirit is the gift that continues to give gifts to us individually, to the church, which is the body of Christ, and to the whole world God loves. Both the Old and New Testaments reveal the spirit to us, present at creation, breathing life into humanity, inspiring justice work, teaching followers the way of Jesus, and so much more. As Christians, we believe the Holy Spirit powerfully as in the Pentecost experience of Acts, or quietly as the breath of Christ in John's Gospel. Since God's Spirit guides and empowers our faith and actions, we are inspired by the gifts of the Spirit for today's church, and the fruit of the Spirit shows forth in our lives and in God's world. In the church, we call on the Spirit to enliven and empower our worship, to enter the ordinary elements of our sacraments in an extraordinary way. And through the human touch of laying of hands, 
and at times anointing with oil to touch and empower our ministries. The Holy Spirit enables us to recognize constantly the work of the Spirit around us and within us in all its fullness. All right. So that is um, sharing, um, using the video to begin. Um, this module, and then I am going to show you in, after you get done with the video, there are boatloads of um, things that you can share along the bottom. So this is the whole, this that I'm, what I'm showing you right now is the Holy Spirit page. So I just showed you the video that played and then along the bottom you can see all you can click all these different things um, that you can work your way through you could do a whole lesson on the holy spirit and it's pretty much all written for you you have to put it together the way that's going to fit for your setting but there's um oodles and oodles of things that can help you share um that resource with your congregation, with your leadership, with your teachers, or um, you know, people who are even new to your church, or uh, like Jesse said, that are newer even to your, the denomination or the faith, you can share just that. That's just one little piece. And then I wanna share one more piece with you, and then um, we'll see what time it is. And that is, um, there is a, a a door, I think it's under educational practices that has all the teaching methods. So if you're clicking around right now, go to the door of educational practices. And I'm going to get there too. And when you get into, get out of the way there, educational practices, scroll to the bottom, you'll see the learning, approaches to learning, teaching methods, designing lesson plans, evaluating curriculum. The teaching methods is what I wanna show you guys. So click on there. If you look in this toolkit, if you scroll down, there are many, many, many modules or lessons and how to help teach, um, teach your students, teach your teachers how to teach. And so I'm gonna keep scrolling down so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's say you wanted to learn how to do something with, um, with um, games. You could click on games. And when you get into games, you will see, you wanna learn how to use Kahoot. Somebody has put a thing on here about how to use Kahoot. Kahoot is an app that you can, uh, use technology. You can do like polls or quizzes in your class and the kids can use their smartphones or their tablets. If you want to learn how to do that, somebody has put a, has put this out here to teach you how to do it. There's a video with it and then there's a PDF. Uh, and then it looks like there's two more that somebody has put on here too. One, if you click on, it's about oversized games. Does that mean playing games like outside and using the sidewalk like a board game? I don't know, but I think that might be what it is. There are over 50 of those modules there for you to look at and learn, and you can adapt into your own setting. And the person who put that together is a professor at Union Presbyterian Seminary, and she has her students as part of their coursework do this as part of their coursework. And then um, if they're publishable, she'll put them out on the website. So they're all um, tried and true and practice things. Sometimes things look good on paper, but when you try to do them with a class, it doesn't work so well. And these have all been practiced and done with real life children or teenagers, <laughs> maybe some grown ups too. So um, that is just a smidgen, smidgen, smidgen of opening doors to discipleship. As you can see, it is a huge resource that we, um, it, it's been out opening doors for discipleship for a long time, but it got a reboot this past year, a fresh, totally redone and refreshened. And um, 
yeah, I just am super excited about it and want to share that with you guys. So um, you can get excited about it too. Let me ask, um, Jesse, since you have taught this, what would be one of the, um, uh, I don't know how to say it exactly, pl most pleasant surprise, I mean, the one, the one piece on the, one or two pieces on the site that, that people will just be amazed and excited or really, really pumped up to see? Is there something that, that you have found people are super excited or is it just too many to mention? Well, if you'll let me share, let me show you two things. Um, let me share. Okay. All right, so if we go back to the homepage, if we scroll down, there's all the four doors. If you keep going, there's three keys. We've done it. Are you a church leader? Are you an educator or are you a volunteer? So people don't come here and like get lost of da 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 or pastors who have their MDivs and think they're holier than thou. <laughs> um, there's stuff just for them. <laughs> So that's one of the nice parts is it's all levels right there and then, and people can not be scared or be like, I know better. Um, if you go to the explore more door, um, this is what we're changing a lot on. Um, we have four that have come out new this year. We have one, which I will announce today that is coming out this week, a youth ministry 101. Um, so that key will pop up uh, later this week. And then we will have another key later on about disabilities, about working with people with disabilities and everything else. So there's always constantly new stuff coming out on different topics. And we're always researching for a number of things. The number one resource I use on this is in leadership, calling others. And I use this with sessions and with um, my CE committee, it's how do you make a call for a volunteer and how do you not make a call for volunteers? And once you see what you do, we showed this at the um, workshop because it's one of my favorite things to do. Everybody's like, I feel like I've done these no-nos. <laughs> and I think we all have because we're just learning. But this is nice. And then in the call or your call, my call thing, there is actually a spiritual um, spirit, like find your own uh, under the additional resources. There's a find your own um, gifts of the spirits inventory and the wakelets. And so there's different things for you to go in there and your spiritual gifts, discovering your spiritual gifts and all these things. And we keep these wakelets up to date constantly. So, and the wakelets are PCUSA, CRC, um, Presbyterian Canada, a bunch of different denominations, a bunch of different ages, a bunch of different range, ranging of um, stuff that we find. So, okay, so where did you get to the wakelets? Under each module at the very bottom is extra resources. Extra, so okay. So you go to the wakelets. Thanks. Awesome, so yeah, so a wakelet is something um, I was not familiar with until last year, but it's another way you can post a bunch of information on and you can see um, to share things. So there's all these um, new, um, just new ways technology. of technology and yeah, it can help. So one of the things I just saw that was really cool is under the um, explore more key. If you clicked on the children's ministry, Brittany Porch, who is in our presbytery has two videos there. One is nice. what's next in children's ministry. And the other one is creating a, like one of those um, playground places. So that's kind of neat. Somebody in our local, um, in our, in our, Columbus area has two of the videos um, up there already for us. So, 
Um, anything else on opening doors that you would like to know about or anything um, you guys are curious about or want some clarification on? Jenny or Jesse or Kathy or somebody in the old one, I think wasn't there more um, information that was specific to like elder training, deacon training, that kind of thing. And am I missing that in this one or? It's in there, but it's more spread out in leadership okay. and that sort of stuff. It's not here's, but here's elder training. Right. It's just all leadership training. Okay. Okay. And the other question that it is in the chat is, are, I noticed under the one where it was kind of intergenerational or it was, but there isn't one for like strictly adult ed or that, or at least I didn't see it in that list. Is there, a, is there another spot we should be looking? For the all ages? Well, I notice when they do the all ages, they tend to do intergenerational. But For if a you congregation go to that's only old, we need to have. <laughs> and and I, I mean, our little congregation has decided that what we do is support the grandparents who will see their little ones, their young ones, because we have none of those young children in their families in our church. So we have through Jenny's support and another context, we. We send those booklets, the, the Spark magazine out to the grandparents so that they can be the Christian educators when, in little ways when the kids come and things like that. So we're, but we're looking at how do we, um, so it's under explore faith formation explore. for adults. Is that older what adults? Okay. And then we're gonna get explore more for grandparents. That's like, how do grandparents deal with that? That's okay. one of the keys that we're gonna be eventually get to. Okay. All right. Thanks. So older adults or any adult who might be 50 rather than my age, a decade or two or more. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, it's a work in progress. If there are, um, if there are some topics you are looking for that you wish to see, like what you just said, Yvonne, like how do we equip grandparents? Those are things that to let me know and I can pass them along um, or through the you know Presbytery and the APSI Facebook page. Jesse's the communications person so I know she'll see that stuff too. So um, mm -hmm. and I do you Jesse who's assigned to opening doors for discipleship is there? It's communication resources okay. and the head person under my committee that's in charge of it is Rebecca Guzman. Is Rebecca. But okay if you just email info at appsynets.org communication resources will get it okay and we'll take care yeah so right if there's certain things that you are, are looking for you're probably not the only one and um some stuff is already there i mean the pc the faithful uh Peace USA mission faith formation site is amazing. And so I do feel like there's some things that are that can cross over or if it's not an opening doors, we can find it in another place maybe. So. And APSI is reworking our resource on our website. Because it's, yeah. <laughs> so in the next six months, we'll have a whole new website. Yay. I'm so doing whole job. website redesign. Big, big job. Well, I want to save the last 15 minutes or so to talk about like um, shifting gears towards like, I know Easter, you probably have planned, but if you don't, we can talk about that. And then um, summer and BBS um, um, questions or things that are going on in your context, I want to leave some time for that. So um, so what are you guys thinking? What are you, what, what's going on for Easter? Well, I know at Mifflin, we've got on uh, Good Friday, we'll have a, a labyrinth that people can come and walk. Um, the Presbytery office has one, uh, it's already being used, but uh, down the road, that's something that you all can borrow. If you just contact Dagmar in the, in the Presbytery Resource Center, this is Soda Valley in Ohio. Um, but I will tell you that for 
the cheap fee of buying me a cookie, um, I can come and lay one out for you, probably not in Texas, maybe in Pennsylvania, that's not that far, but it's not hard to lay out a labyrinth, either using yarn or tape or chalk, depending if it's outdoors. It, it's, you, can, you, can, you can make one really with pretty easily. And, and that's something I'd be glad to, yes. to help you do that. Um, Cause that's what we'll do for, for Good Friday is we'll, in fact, we'll probably have one inside and outside. So yeah. it's nice enough weather. Folks can do it outside. And I, and I have some resources. Um, you know, what is it? What might you think about while you're walking the labyrinth? So something to think about, like I said, I'd be, be happy to help facilitate, either teach you how to do it. Or like I said, I, y'all in the Presbytery, I, I'll, I'll come do it for you um, if you want. I saw one that was really cool. It was done with like um, Christmas lights, not Christmas lights, but you know, like, so it was like the lights. And oh, was, that's very that, cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And I found out in my new, new place, Denison University is in our backyard, based really in our backyard. And they have a labyrinth at the end of the um, hill and I didn't know it. So I have one within walking distance of the church, which is cool. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So, um other stuff that you guys have going on for Holy Week or um, um, Good Friday or Easter? It's One of the things that we're bringing for Easter, and hold on, let me reach for it. Our Alleluia ones, which is kind of ribbon on a stick. So that when, um, and you can order these from Amazon really cheap. Um, whenever we say or sing Alleluia, kids would wave the wand. And um, so that'll be a first time for here doing that. But I've done that with other churches and the choir often wants one. And um, so it, what I found um, really helpful is it helped reinforce the um, great Easter hymns, you know, Jesus Christ is risen today. So if you get the kids before and, you know, just sing the refrain for them and help them practice that, then they learn that song and participate and, um, you know, just listening up through the service for all the different times the choir sings it, or it's, you know, Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah, whatever. So it's a really fun, engaging way. And usually if there are leftover Alleluia wands, the adults take them. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. Um, we've made them out of um, toilet paper rolls with cray paper, and mm -hmm. then it makes a little bit of a sound, which is kind of fun. And then we got a little more sophisticated with making the ribbons on dowels. And then um, the last church I was at was like, ah, let's see if they're on Amazon. <laughs> and that was really easy. <laughs> so just nice an idea. I don't know if any of y'all do, um, your churches are associated with, with egg hunts, which they often do. I would really, really encourage you if you do that, be sure that you, that you have a, a Christian education piece associated with that. Um, have them come early, you know, whatever time your, your hunt is that they make a craft, uh, make butterflies maybe that you use to decorate your sanctuary or your fellowship area. Um, you can do um, uh, with your picture of your hand and you trace it and fold it and that makes a lily. Uh, so some kind of craft and then even just a very brief, you know, version of the story. There are lots of really good, I'll be blunt, kid-friendly versions of the Easter story. Um, my personal bias is I don't think kids need to be overwhelmed with atonement theology uh, for, for, for Good Friday and Easter. Um, by that, I mean, you know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. I, I don't, there's other ways to understand the crucifixion and resurrection that I think are more, give God a better name uh, and have another way of expressing God's great love for the world. Um, if you want to know more about that, you know, let me know. But um, several educators have written some beautiful things on that. Uh, that we can share that resource too. But anyway, just don't just say Easter egg hunt and have the bunny. You're you're just missing it. You're missing the opportunity to really have this be the Christian holiday that it is. 
Um, and there's lots of, again, there's lots of resources online and, and um, I'm sure Jenny has lots of ideas and, and others do too that, you know, how you can, how you can make it be focused on, you know, the love of God for us at Easter. So anyway, that's my little bias. I'll well, I would appreciate that bias projected in, in our little setting because we're a church that is becoming increasingly surrounded with new neighbors who are Hindu and Buddhist. Mm. And um, the, yes, we invite, you know, they participate because kids will come to this mm -hmm. space and whatever. Um, so I would be particularly interested in following up with something that is kid friendly and, and um, a way to help neighbors understand what this Christian, this old, white Christian church is in mm -hmm. the middle of this new neighborhood of new builds with, um, with other ethnic and, and faith-based structures. So, um, yeah. Um, I'll send out, uh, Jenny or Tracy or Jesse, do you, do you recall, is it Tracy? Did Tracy Smith do that? Yeah, she she's, spent she's quite, quite yeah. a bit of time with, and I read some of her work in terms of the, mm -hmm. and I certainly have the, the faith practices book and that sort of thing, but I'm trying to figure out is there something that would be um, no. easily accessible for an adult to read and understand that I'm not, I'm not shoving my religion down their kid's throat because they come to the church for an Easter, but I want them to understand that, I mean, I, I've got some real prejudice here because hosting a parent toddler program, I had a very, very sweet Buddhist woman bring her little girl who had been frightened off of the grounds of another Catholic of another Protestant church and so she was afraid to come to our parent toddler program mm. and um and I would like to buffer that image that you would be chased off of a church's ground because you look different or because you are um you know, your dress is different so yeah. um so I would, you know, that's that's the context of this of this old church and in, in, in farmland that's trying the pop that's growing houses now instead of corn and wheat. So yeah. um for our um kind of Easter egg hunt, like we're a downtown church, so we don't have any like green space really. I mean we have like two, you know, side lawns that are not really lawns. Um, so what we do, uh, like the idea that I came up with like a couple of year, years ago is, I don't know if anyone has seen the like wooden eggs that you can get from Michael's that like stand up. So basically what I did is my mom has a cricket. And so I asked her to, um, cut out different, um, just stickers, basically like a butterfly across a, a donkey, um, like just different things different symbols that are related to like the easter story and so i put them on the eggs the kids have to go find each one and then we have like a booklet or a pamphlet that explains how it relates to the easter story um on each you know on each symbol or each picture um and they have to you know like mark it off as they go find them and then um they come back to um like the beginning and we have like a little like bag of things for them to take um but it's been pretty fun I mean we we don't make it like a community thing um it's not again like we're not in the position to really do like a huge egg hunt type of thing so um I don't know so I'm looking forward to like my dog is choosing to drink water at this very moment um <laughs> so sorry um not too loud it's okay <laughs> um so it's it's been a really good thing and especially during COVID it was good because you know you're keeping people somewhat not all together at one time um but I'm trying to think about like ways to improve it or make it more like faith formation type things but I mean it is also like a game type of thing so um but that's what we do for our programming um kind of egg hunt thing yeah i like that kylie that's 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 neat again as you said it's not they're going to, to places so it's actually activities that's that sounds neat 
I think what we're doing, um, and a little context, we actually have a, a very large congregation. This is the largest congregation I've ever served, um, nearly 2,000 members. Um, and so part of it is the part of why we're doing things the way I think we're going to do them. It's not in concrete yet, but um, is my high anxiety of actually the, and I know so many churches would love to have this problem, but um, the potential number of kids that we will have mm -hmm. will probably, um, we will be outgrown for the spaces we have to put them. And so uh, beyond Easter, I mean, we, in the fall, we started out with 51 kids registered. We're now over, well over 120 kids registered. But on Easter, if you, I mean, you know how Easter and Christmas go with attendance, right? It explodes and people come out of the woodwork and then they disappear. Go back and in the woodwork. <laughs> then they go back in the woodwork. So my concern is, I don't know if our classrooms will hold the number of kids that, you know, we need to. So I think what we're going to do is um, our kids always start out in the sanctuary because we don't have the sandwich model. We do Sunday school during the first service, which mm -hmm. I'm not a fan, but no. it is what it is. Um, so they start there and they'll, they will start there for Easter too. And then they'll be dismissed to us. And I think we're going to rotate having kids go in a large group some kids go in a large group. We have a biblical storyteller, a certified biblical storyteller in our congregation. So she will tell the story as only a biblical storyteller can to one group while another group does an egg hunt. Um, and then, and they'll switch. And that, but the egg hunt, I think what we're going to do, um, we're not doing candy. We're not doing any of that. I'm sure they're going to get more than enough candy at home and from families and all of that. Plus the allergy issue has just exploded for us. And I'm just not even going down that road. So um, <clears throat> instead, I think we're going to, we're going to tell the kids when they're looking for eggs, we have ones that we've purchased that are already pre like from oriental trading or something maybe that already have like little like tiny little coloring pages in them and like little storybooks they're like miniature so take one of those take a purple one to so they're going to be told like what to look for make sure you take you find this egg and this egg and this egg and this egg so the different colors but in like the purple eggs they will have fake money and then so once they get back to their classroom they will be able to go count all of the money that they get I'm sorry the other color eggs will have money in it the purple eggs something different I'll get to that and so they'll count all their their fake money and then they'll have a choice of which Presbyterian um what is it Presbyterian disaster PDA Mm -hmm. association which fund they would like to put a donation towards well we have the donation like all ready to go right and so if you know 20 percent of their money <clears throat> their donation they put in this particular basket then 20 percent of our donation will go and this is beyond the congregation's um one great hour of sharing donation. So this is a separate little fund. So 20% will go to this one, 60% will go to this one, you know, mm -hmm. whatever their money, you know, however they choose. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we will go to that. And then the purple thing was, will be like a little, um, one, it'll be the recipe for, I'm sure you probably all have done those um, crescent roll, those empty tomb crescent rolls. So since we're not doing it home, we're going to send the re or at church, we're going to send the recipe home. But at the bottom of it, like um, how how each piece engages with the story, but then a little devotion that they can do at home with their families. So the purple egg with that content will go home with them. The money is then distributed into the baskets. Um, and what else? Oh, they get to take the little prepackaged eggs homes home as well. So mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the plan. We yeah, haven't sounds we, good. We haven't put it all into motion yet, but <laughs> great. 
And we have a labyrinth too. We have one, an inside, you know, the big canvas one that looks like the shark mm -hmm. one. And then we have one outside that's in brick in our memorial garden too. Cool. So yeah, um, I love I love me a labyrinth walk. Lovely. Yeah, that's really great. And I think the biggest thing too with Easter, I mean, you know this, Jill, too, is that you just want to have the kids want to you have fun, you want to give them some kind of content, but you know, they're all geeked up and there's not a whole lot of theological learning going on on like no. Easter and Christmas Eve. It's just I think about what you felt like when you were six years old or eight years old. It's you know, it's an important piece that we do and 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 like what Kathy said, it, it's our call to do that. But I think if we can have a safe, fun place that they want to come back to, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, well, we are at eight o'clock. I hate to cut anybody off, and we didn't even get to Yvonne with Vacation Bible School. But um, I'm happy to stay on if, if people want to chat more about okay. what you're doing. In yeah, your church, I just don't want other oh, yeah. ideas. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and and uh, and perhaps. Um, well, as soon as that that Virginia Theological Seminary things comes comes out, I think that's good too. But um, even um, in if there's like five or six of us that want to get together to talk about BBS curriculum and looking at that, that's something that can happen as well. Yeah. What What are you all thinking? I mean, we we sort of put out the information about this gathering. Do you have other? burning questions, um, issues that you really wanted to toss around with some other educators. Um, and as, as Jenny said, anybody that really needs to bug off, it won't hurt our feelings. Um, we're just glad you're here. Um, but anybody that, you know, is there something that you would really like some input on or a challenge you have, or you'd like some brainstorming help with, what would mm -hmm. be helpful for you? Kylie, Kylie Jill and Yvonne. Yeah. I have a question and it's because it happened today. So it's fresh and I'm irritated about it. <laughs> and I'm sorry that the, the Pennsylvania gal is like, like the interloper here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so I, we, we chose to do Cokesbury's stuff again, the um, hero hotline, I think it's called. Um, and I emailed Oh, I went on the live chat today with a representative because my question was um, tomorrow I'm doing a video with the gal who was our puppeteer last year with DJ Cupcake and she's going to do it again this this year but the so we're we're having DJ Cupcake introduce the new one and kind of do a little promo for this summer and so we'd like to include like trailing into and out of that little video clip, the theme song or part of it kind of in the background. So I wanted to, and then we broadcast it to through our e-news and Facebook and all of that. So I'm looking for permission to be able to do that, right? I'm trying to do the right thing. And the other thing I asked her was um, at the end of VBS, we would like to do a VBS Sunday worship focus, right? And so... Also, we live stream mm -hmm. on like everything, BoxCast and YouTube and Facebook. Can we get permission to do that? Nope. Yep. Yep. Really? Nope. Now, last nope. year, we did. They gave us permission. Not allowed to do it unless our Facebook is private. Now, what church wants to have a private Facebook? I mean, come on. BoxCast is not private. And unless we should we lock down our YouTube to only members, we can't put it on YouTube either. Well, so, that's really good to know. Uh, Cause actually I think, I think Mifflin's doing um, hero hotline. So you okay. can't do the music in a yeah. stream service. Nope, nope. We can't stream our service. We can't, we'd have to, I don't know, shut off the sound or something, wow. but then nobody, I mean, we have hundreds of people that stream us online every single week. And so uh, that is short, so short sighted of Cokesbury. What is wrong with that? I know. And uh, you think the advertising, you know, it's like product placement almost, you know, and don't, wouldn't you want that? So I didn't stop with her. I went higher up. So we'll see what the answer is because okay. I'm not taking no for an answer. Like it, we're not looking to profit. Right. So I don't know if you, if anybody here had any 
better ideas. No, but I, I think the more people they hear from, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so so this will go on on our Mifflin's um, list of things to do is mm -hmm. to say, and even ask the, you know, we'll start with asking the question. So just want to confirm that we can, yeah, you know, play the background music while our kids sing the song right. and worship the next Sunday. How could you say no to that? Yeah. That's just yeah. So you can do it if yeah. you're not streaming, but if you're streaming. Yeah, no, we're streaming. Yeah, everybody is now. I know. <laughs> That's what happened after the pandemic. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm really frustrated, particularly today, because it just happened before I left sure. to come home to jump on here. Okay. But if anybody has any wisdom or if you discover anybody that gets any wisdom. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jill. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's something to, that is very frustrating. And Yvonne, I know you guys were th thinking about maybe that Operation Restoration was one of the ones that I, I know I'd, I'd talked to Tracy, who is going to lead it with um, at Worthington and suggested that. And the only the only thing that I didn't realize when I suggested it, it doesn't have a preschool component. And I think okay. you guys are going to be very happy preschool with Tracy leading it with preschool parents. I, I wonder if you guys need to find something that has the the preschool guide to go with it as well, which Cokesbury does, group does, uh, Shine, Shine, I think does. So um, that's the only thing I, I worried about after I recommended it. I didn't realize it didn't have the preschool component. Hmm. Okay. Well, the so, old, I wouldn't have stopped in tonight, but I wanted to make sure that since I had suggested that she join the group, that I show up and say, see, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy this conversation and I'm definitely going to chase Kathy later to talk about a, putting a labyrinth out there but I uh, you know but I am fully Presbyterian so I will not make a request until our Christian Ed Committee has talked about it. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I just learned I don't what's this Kathy I said you're very decent and in order <laughs> Not always, and this little church has allowed me to kind of nudge them in ways that, yeah. you know, I try to dance on that very gently mm -hmm. because I'm not really a member if I'm sort of the pastor's wife in this, and yeah. I don't want to, you know, so I, I dance gently on that. <laughs> so, For sure. But they're so sweet, and they're so willing to try stuff that it's really tempting to say, here's what we're going to do next. Mm -hmm. Yes, for so, sure. Well, anyway. I'll remind, I'll remind the folks in our presbytery. Um, and Jill, I don't, doesn't sound like you're going to need this, wouldn't need this anyway, uh, that Mifflin again has old VBSs that we are glad to give anybody that wants them. Right. We've right. got Babylon, Kingdom Rock, I'm reading the list, Destination Dig, Hero Central, which is different than the Hero right. new name this year, Switchboard, whatever it was, Knights of the North Castle, Rocky Railway, and Wilderness Escape. So, you know, we have it in the cans or the box, maybe not all the pieces, but a whole lot of pieces. So mm -hmm. if anybody wants to, to borrow one or more of them or look at them or whatever, you we sure can. May, we may really be interested in that, Kathy. We've, yeah. we've used group for the last several years. Mm -hmm. We stand together with the other churches on mm -hmm. Mound Street. Um, a Catholic congregation, a Lutheran congregation. Okay. Ours and sometimes a United Methodist. Um, so we try to find something middle of the road, but yeah. for those of you who are familiar, groups Thursday night program usually just doesn't sound very much like those congregations I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, as you said, we're not into the atonement theology when we're working with little children. So um, we, we would be interested in looking because the only thing that's been mentioned so far in our group meetings has been stellar, which is a group VBS mm -hmm. curriculum. Yeah. No, and that's, yeah. I was going to say, Jill put in there, yeah, do a lot of writing, rewriting. And that's what we, I mean, when I've been in churches that have done group, I I rewrite Thursday. I mean, so just, that, and that's just what do, we've done too, Kathy. You know, and that's just extra work. So why, you know, if you can find stuff, you don't have to rewrite. Now, I will make a plug for Compassion Camp. Did anybody try Compassion Camp? We really liked it. We we've done both the years, the last two years, and again, I've got all the resources if somebody wants to 
look at it up close. Um, but it, we were really pleased with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I will second that. I liked it. I felt like it needed a little more oomph, but it was, it was very good. It was very good. And it's Presbyterian written. So a lot of it just takes some of the guesswork out for me. I mean, I don't mind re, you know, looking at things and adapting things, but um, if I can spend my time doing other things, that's good too. So, yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Anywho. Well, I'm sorry, but I have to get off, but you guys can continue. Kathy's yeah, I'm happy to stay. Anybody that wants to stay and we can chat about anything you want. And Jenny, <laughs> thanks for organizing. Jesse, Thank thanks for being Thank on. Anytime. Good to see you. Um, Good to meet our out, out of towners too. Today. Yes, Jill, very glad. Glad yeah. you're with us. I think uh, some of the other folks had to go, I but we lost our Pennsylvanians. <laughs> thanks for having us. I just have a quick question for Jesse. How's your daughter? Yes, Jill. She's doing good. Um, my daughter um, broke her forearm at recess last week. Yeah. And uh, it's been crazy. She ended up having to have surgery, but she's bouncing back great. And, good. you know, she's second grade. So she's, yeah. Good. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Jill. That was quite a break. Yeah. Okay. Blessings on her healing. Thank you, guys. So. Have a good night. Do you have some questions that you want to chat about or you're you're ready ready to be done? I think we're ready to be done, but Kathy, I will be talking to you about a labyrinth. We have yeah. a we have a shelter. So being able to chalk something under the shelter would protect it from the weather. Yeah, for um, sure. And that way I, maybe we wouldn't be asking quite so last minute <laughs> that we might be otherwise. But right. but uh, but anyway, so I can follow. Oh, yeah, chalk, chalking, chalking is really fast. I mean, chalking, I can, do, I can chalk it in 15 minutes. Wow. Or but less. It, it takes four times as long to drive from Mifflin to, to <laughs> North Brown. So just so you know. That's fine. Yeah, like, you know, I'm unemployed now. So I, you know. Yeah, the liberation. Yeah. yeah, yeah I can be two cookies. Re retirement two. that you have all the spare time, right? Yeah. Two cookies. Yes. Susan says I should up it to two cookies. So okay. all right. Well, and Susan, it's a delight to turn you into a real life person. I wish you well with that, with that PNC yes, you work. We and appreciate your help. Well, and anytime. So anyway, take Beautiful. care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Good to see you, Bye -bye. ladies. Bye-bye.